Hello, and welcome to another episode of Lights Out, your virtual campfire. I'm your hostess with the most as ghosties, Sylvia Schultz. Illinois is the land of Lincoln. This is where our 16th president grew up, where he practiced law, and where he got elected to the highest office in the land. Not bad for a gawky dork from the frontier. Of course, Springfield, the state's capital, is known for its Lincoln connection. But that's not where he started off. One of the places that played a big part in Lincoln's early life was a small town on the Sangamon River called New Salem. Let's poke around this collection of cabins and go lights out. New Salem was founded in 1829 when James Rutledge and John Cameron built a grist mill using the Sangamon River to power it. The Sangamon is quite shallow as rivers go, but it had its uses for the little settlement. There was a high spot in the riverbed right at New Salem, and the townspeople put a dam there. In 1831, a flatboat piloted by a 22-year-old Abraham Lincoln got stuck on the dam. The little flatboat wasn't in too much trouble. The Sangamon's not a treacherous river by any means, but it was taking on water and in danger of spilling its cargo overboard. Lincoln came up with a harebrained idea. He told his fellow boatmen to drill a hole in the bottom of the flatboat to let the water out. To everyone's amazement, the plan worked. The water ran out of the hole where the flatboat was high-sided, the boat recovered, and Lincoln and the others were soon on their way. But Lincoln didn't forget the little town of New Salem. He settled there later that year and lived there from 1831 to 1837. He ran the general store, served as postmaster, and worked as a surveyor and rail splitter. It was in New Salem that Lincoln was called to serve in the Black Hawk War, although he and his company didn't see action. It was in New Salem that he was elected to the Illinois General Assembly. And it was in New Salem that Abe Lincoln fell in love with pretty Anne Rutledge. New Salem was home to about 20 to 25 families. When Lincoln lived there, the village also had a blacksmith shop, a cooper shop where barrels were made, a tavern, two doctor's offices, a church that doubled as a schoolhouse, a grocery store, and four general stores. Craftsmen in the town included a tanner, a shoemaker, and a hat maker, and people who worked in the wool carding mill. New Salem was more than a frontier collection of homesteaders. This was a place of industry and small business. A display at the visitor's center gives an idea of the personality of this small but vital community. The population was literate. There was an active social environment, including storytelling sessions, a debate society, church functions, and gaming activities. Politics was serious business as Illinois grew and organized itself. New Salem existed a little over 10 years. The village began to decline when it was determined that the Sangamon River could not be navigated by steamboats. Residents began to move to nearby towns, and by the early 1840s, New Salem had ceased to exist. Despite the high hopes and diligence of its settlers, New Salem was not destined to become a thriving community. Nearby Petersburg became the county seat, while New Salem was passed over for that honor. By 1840, the town was abandoned. The town, laid out with high hopes for commercial success, lasted only about 11 years. But the state of Illinois didn't forget this little settlement that played such a large role in Lincoln's life. The land was gifted to the state in 1919, and during the Great Depression, the CCC rebuilt the village on its original foundations. Today, the place is known as Lincoln's New Salem Historic Site, complete with visitor center, theater, and gift shops. Come take a stroll through New Salem with me, and we'll get to know the place. sitting on the porch 
of the house that was the reproduction of the house that was shared by Samuel and Parthena Nance Hill. And I'm hoping that I can have a bit of a conversation. Mrs. Hill, would you care to join me on your front porch? I beg your pardon for being so free and sitting down on your front porch without an invitation. I just came to set a spell and to see if you had any news to share. I'm a visitor. I'm just passing through. I'm from up north by Pekin. And seeing as how I'm a traveler and I'm not used to the news of these parts, I'm wondering if you'd be so kind as to share some news with me. That is someone walking along the sidewalk. <laughs> Although she did seem to disappear right quick. I had no, oh, there she is. Okay. If I didn't know better, I thought it was a ghost humming. Is anybody here with me? Would anybody like to come and set a spell on the porch with in this gorgeous weather? Sure is a pretty town you've got here. Are you happy here, Mrs. Hill? If there's somebody here with me, I'd like to say hello, and you can say hello back. I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. I know this looks strange, these two things I'm holding in my hands, but I can't see you right now. But these things that I'm holding will help me hear you later on. So if you say howdy, I will hear it. Just not right now. And how are you this beautiful afternoon? Are you fair and well? That's a perfectly normal human humming again. I took the liberty of having a peek inside your home. It's beautiful. Looks like you've got the uh, 
the only true two-story home here. It's absolutely beautiful, and you must be very proud of it. So how do you feel about all these folks traipsing through? Must give you a lot to talk about, yes? Do you talk with the other townsfolk about all these odd-looking people that come through your homes? I understand you were somewhat of an expert on young Lincoln when he was here. I hear tell you watched him over at the store and watched him be a bit of a pudding head. Isn't that right? Didn't mind the store very well just sat and read the paper and told stories all day, swapped tales with folks that came to the store, huh? Is that true? Were you happy living here? It's a beautiful home. Well, I think I am going to take my leave of you and go find someone else to talk to and possibly get me a something nice and cold to drink. It is rather a warm day out today. Would you like to be neighborly and invite me in for a drink, poor traveler like me? I apologize for showing up on your doorstep like this. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Hill and Mr. Hill, if you came out to join us to say hello. I sure did enjoy visiting with you, and I will be traveling on. Goodbye, and thank you for your hospitality. This is still going. I'm still recording, so I'm going to just let it go, keep recording, and see if anybody else says to, comes to say hello while I'm walking along. See if anybody just wants to say anything while I walk along to the Cooper's shop.
swing by the store here. Let's see if we can get any EVPs at the store. What do you say? Mr. Lincoln, Mr. Barry. I have come to buy some molasses and cornmeal. Thinking of making me up some Johnny cakes. And I'd like some molasses to put on them. Mr. Lincoln, is there any news from Springfield? Figure you'd be the fellow to ask. Reading all those newspapers. And Mr. Lincoln, I sure was impressed with the way you solved getting that flatboat over the dam here on the Sangamon. I know the Sangamon's not real easy to navigate some days. But you were just brilliant in your solution. And that led you here. We're happy to have you. Well, I'd be best be moving on. Thank you for visiting with me. Just stop by to say howdy. But uh, I'm wondering if there are any ghost stories you can share with me. Not that I'm aware of anyway. I okay. mean, um, I've been out here 14 years and I've yet to see really? a ghost. So, <laughs> okay. uh, as far as I know, there there weren't any. That uh, The hate tales or whatever, that was more common down in the... But, I mean, there may have been some because that's where most of the people that lived here came from, the Appalachian Mountain region ah. uh, of uh, eastern Tennessee and Kentucky, what's now West Virginia. And the hate tales were pretty common down there, so they may have brought some with them, but I've never heard of any here. So, but okay. That doesn't mean that there weren't, but I've never heard of any. So, okay. Uh, I'm not exactly sure if the, if there, the interpreter over at the... Uh, um, the dog trot, the double, the duplex type home across the street there. Ooh. She's full time, been here longer than I have, so she might know. But like I said, I've, I've been here 13, 14 years, and I've never heard of anybody saying anything about ghost tales or, or anything like that. But okay. uh, I never even thought about it until you asked. But <laughs> like I said most of the people that lived here came from the Appalachian Mountain region, and, and hate tales are, are, I mean, they were called hate tales rather than ghosts, but... Uh, That's my that, license plate on my car is hate oh, one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, they, we were down there driving through back roads one year, and we saw this tree, and it had all kinds of stuff hanging from the branches. And I asked about it, and they said it was a hate blue, tree. Blue bottles? Yeah. Ah. And it was a hate tree, and the wind would blow, they clink together, and that was supposed to scare off the spirits or whatever. <laughs> so that's the first time I'd ever heard about haints or whatever. But, yeah. Uh, so, but Jane might know over if she's over there at the dog trot. She was there earlier. So. All right, brilliant. So. I didn't see anybody in the dog trot house. Oh well, she may. When have, I well, passed, she may have by. moved or whatever. But, okay, uh, there was a fellow in the Cooper's yeah. shop, so I need to speak with him for a bit. Well, thank you so much for All your right. time and the conversation. Okay. Enjoy your afternoon. <laughs> thank you. I was wondering, uh, in the absence of finding Jane, whether you might possibly have any ghost stories to share? Not really. No? Okay. 
Well, the fellow up at the, uh, at the visitor center said something very sensible to me. He said, why would anybody haunt a place that was only a going concern for about 10 years? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I had never realized that, that it was just that little amount yeah. of time. Yeah. So Basically, Makes uh, sense. The, uh, the mill was approved in 1829. By 1840, there were four buildings left here. Oh! oh. Uh, so, yes, the, uh, the Rutledge Tavern, the saw and grist mill down at the river, and the carding mill. Okay. Because as people moved away, uh, all but a few of the, in other words, the outhouses and some things like that might have been left behind, <laughs> at least for a while. But most of the uh, larger buildings, uh, whether it be homes or barns, uh, would have been uh, torn down, you know, to salvage the lumber. Mm. Wow. Yeah, you never think of bringing your entire house with you when you move, mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but I suppose see, if lumber's most, scarce, you, yeah, you should do that. Yeah, most of the trees are gone. Yeah. Uh, after uh, oh, the first five years of the village, uh, people have cut down whatever was available and it wasn't until um, their, you know, uh, the, the restoration of the village that they started replanting trees. Oh my. Because this had been basically farmland or pasture land oh, okay. from 1840 until uh, 1908. Oh wow. Hmm. Odd to think that it would look so different. It wouldn't mm -hmm. have any trees. <laughs> no, I've got uh, I've got some postcards at home that, uh, in fact, the lady who brought them to me came through this afternoon. Ah. That they'd been her grandmother had given them to her oh. back years ago, and the postage would date sometime 1958 to 1961. Okay. Uh, three cent postage on uh, <laughs> postcard. And uh, the uh, pictures appear, well, most of them are inside buildings, but one oh. was apparently taken from over here on this berm. Mm hmm. And that way, uh, in other words, between Trent's and uh, the Cooper shop, you can see straight that way and you see three trees oh wow and, and they were, they were obviously young trees okay amazing it says in 1995 these two forgotten sites were excavated archaeologically the investigations encountered several subsurface features and thousands of artifacts also discovered in this field was the remnant of a road which once passed over the hilltop. Walk across this field along the path that follows the old roadbed and examine displays located at the two forgotten sites whose discovery has rewritten the history of New Salem's earliest days. This is pretty neat. Um, you, you guys who maybe know me a little bit better than everybody else, you know that your hostess with the most is ghosties in another lifetime. Really, really, really liked archaeology. Um, so, oh my gosh, there are two, two little woodchucks out here. I gotta get a picture. So, anyway, yes, we'll get a picture to add to this. Two adorable little woodchucks. So yeah, I dig archaeology. I dig finding artifacts. So that just really is something that interests me. And it's for the same reason that I like ghost stories. It's just the uh, idea of people who were here before us. I think that was a mama and a baby little woodchuck. They just ran off into the grass here so I can't get any more pictures for you. 
but so anyway there's that archaeology and ghost stories they go hand in hand believe me or don't but that's the way I feel about it oh you guys this is cool all right so the picture that I just took is called Before New Salem. It's part of this archaeology thing. And the sign says, based on the artifacts found at this site, archaeologists believe that the house that once stood here was built long before John Cameron arrived to plat New Salem. The house was still standing when the town was founded, what was probably abandoned shortly thereafter. Certain artifacts found at the site, including glass and shell trade beads and a brass hair ornament, also suggest that the inhabitants of this house were occasionally visited by Native Americans. The conversations between Indians and settlers that took place in this house were some of the last to occur in central Illinois, as Native Americans were soon pushed further west across the Mississippi River. But it wasn't all Little House on the Prairie and Young Abe Lincoln in New Salem. The town only existed for 11 years, but that was enough time to be touched by tragedy. Rowan Herndon was an early settler of New Salem. His cousin was William Herndon, who later became Lincoln's law partner. Rowan married Elizabeth Graham in 1827 in Kentucky. By the spring of 1831, they had moved to New Salem. On the morning of January 18, 1833, Herndon was cleaning his rifle, getting ready to go hunting. Lincoln was already at work doing odd jobs at the Rutledge Tavern. He found that he needed a specific tool for the repair work he was doing, so he sent 10-year-old Nancy Rutledge to over to the Herndon cabin to fetch it. As Nancy came into the cabin, Herndon was loading his rifle. Nancy started to tell Elizabeth what she needed when the rifle accidentally discharged. The ball struck Elizabeth in the neck, hitting an artery. Elizabeth collapsed in front of a horrified Nancy, arterial blood spraying everywhere. The young woman was dead within moments. Nancy fled back to the tavern to tell the tragic news. Although everyone in the village knew the shooting had been an accident, the pall of death and suspicion lay heavily on Rowan Herndon. He left the town soon afterward. It seems that Elizabeth hasn't left the scene of her untimely death. Visitors to the park sometimes see the ghostly apparition of a woman in homespun clothing standing in the doorway of this cabin. One family was walking along the path near the Herndon cabin when the young girl pointed at the cabin and said casually that she liked the dress the woman was wearing. Her parents, seeing no one, were understandably confused. The girl insisted that she saw a woman standing in front of the cabin. The parents walked over to the cabin, and the father even tried the door. It was closed and locked. It was only later that the parents learned the tragic history of that particular cabin. The door to the Herndon cabin was also locked the day I visited New Salem, but that didn't stop me from circling the rustic building in search of the spirit of Elizabeth Herndon. Okay, guys, I found it. This is pretty awesome. The other thing that, the other ghost story associated with New Salem is the fact that a woman was killed here. The town only lasted for 10 years or so, but that was enough time for a killing to happen. Uh, we don't know whether this was an accident or not. The house in question is called, the, the sign here says, the Rowan Herndon Residence. Herndon has married Mentor Graham's sister Elizabeth in Kentucky in 1827. By the spring of 1831, they were living in New Salem, where Rowan and his brother James built a log residence, and later in the fall built a store. 
In the summer of 1832, James sold his interest in the store to William Barry and moved away. Rowan, not liking Barry for a partner, sold his interest to Abe Lincoln. Okay, so we've got that store thing all cleared up. Here's the meat of the story. On January 18th, 1833, Rowan accidentally shot his wife while preparing for a hunting ex expedition and killed her. Soon after, he moved to Island Grove Township in Sangamon County. Rowan was never able to escape rumors that he had murdered his wife. So we're going to find out here. Yes, we are. So, I've got the uh, spirit, ba spirit box going here. Maybe, possibly. It's not making any noise, though. Let's just get rid of that and turn on the ghost radar instead. So, we'll walk around this building here. We'll look at the ghost radar and see if anybody shows up and see if anyone wants to talk to me. So, it's Rowan and Elizabeth. There are the folks we're talking about here. Rowan and Elizabeth. Rowan, are you here? See a couple. See a couple folks standing right behind me, is that right? Elizabeth, my goodness, you have a lovely home here. I know, yes, it's a reproduction. But heck, I'd like to live here. This looks like a cozy place. Elizabeth and Rowan, I cannot see you, but I'm hoping that you're here with me and that we can have a conversation. If you talk to me, if you tell me something, I will hear it later. These two things in my hands that I'm walking around with, they will help me hear what you have to say to me. I won't hear it right now, but I'll hear it later. Okay, and just as a note for people who are listening to this, I don't know how you feel about the ghost radar, but it is going nuts here. I have all sorts of little spots on my radar here. Red ones and green ones and great big green ones. So, if the ghost radar is to be believed, there is quite a bit of activity here, which is wonderful. Miss Elizabeth, are you here? Would you like to say anything to me? to Rowan for gosh five maybe six years so you were pretty young when he shot you can you tell me what happened history says and we do still talk about you history says that Rowan was cleaning his gun and he accidentally shot you with it while he was cleaning it. Is that true? Was it an accident?
Miss Elizabeth, did you and Mr. Rowan get along? I know every couple has their quarrels. But was it good between the two of you? Were you ever afraid of him? Elizabeth, were you ever afraid of Rowan? Rowan, what do you have to say about all of this? I would think that people on the frontier would be a little more careful where they pointed a gun when they were cleaning it. Just saying. Now you say that you didn't murder Elizabeth. But how can you explain that? How can you explain the fact that you were cleaning your gun and being careless? How can you explain the fact that it went off and Elizabeth was in the way and it killed her? Can you explain that? I'm not here to judge you, Rowan. I can't do that. I would just like to know what happened. Can you tell me what happened? Do you want to tell me what happened? If you tell me it was an accident, I'll believe you. But you have to tell me yes or no. Rowan, we know that you killed Elizabeth. We know this. What I would like to know is, was it an accident? Can you tell me yes or no? Was it an accident that you killed your wife? Yes or no? Elizabeth, did you stay here afterwards? Did you stay here after you died? Elizabeth, did you forgive Rowan for shooting you? And Elizabeth, I'll ask you the same question I asked Rowan. We know that he killed you. Was it an accident? Yes or no?
Okay. Elizabeth and Rowan, I'm going to walk around your cabin one more time. And if there's anything you want to say to me while I'm walking, you can say it. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not here to pass judgment. I cannot do that. I'm not interested in doing that. All I'm interested in having is having you answer my questions, please. So if you want to tell me what happened, now is your chance to tell me what happened. Okay, I'm done. I'm going to shut off my machines here. I hope someone has talked to me. I hope someone has told me the truth. Thank you for talking with me. I appreciate your time. And I hope that you find rest. Thank you for talking with me. Goodbye. I didn't encounter any ghosts at New Salem myself but I've spoken to people who have had their own brushes with the spirit world. I gave a talk at Lily M. Evans Library and chatted with Anita, one of the librarians there. She told me she'd gone to New Salem in grade school on a field trip. She and a group of friends had gone up to one cabin. They didn't go inside, but they pressed their faces up to the window to peer into the small room. Anita, to her delight, saw someone cooking over the fire at the cabin's hearth. The woman was wearing a gingham dress with an apron over it to protect her skirts, and she had eyes of the most brilliant blue. She turned her head and fixed that gaze on Anita, looking straight at her. The group of girls moved on, but Anita couldn't forget that beautiful gaze. She turned to her friends, bubbling with excitement. Isn't it great that they have people here dressed like they would have in olden times, she gushed. The two girls with her just stared blankly at her. They hadn't seen anyone in the cabin. They had zero clue, Anita told me, a tinge of wonder in her voice, even after decades. Thank you for joining me on this trip through one of my favorite Lincoln sites. I hope you had as much fun listening to the show as I did wandering those paths on a bright, sunny summer day. I have a real treat for you guys in the next episode. We are going to spend the night at a house where, on a quiet night in 1912, eight people were hacked to death in their sleep by an axe murderer. Join me for a visit to the Velisca Axe Murder House the next time we go Lights Out.